electric cars are often rather dull, but this one, Ford's Mustang Mach-E, very definitely isn't. The use of that famous name and the styling cues that go with it has certainly divided opinion, but it's also inspired the Blue Oval brand to give this family-sized sporting SUV a charisma its obvious rivals lack. Plus, if you go for the larger extended range battery option, you get yourself an EV offering a very decent all-electric driving range too. It all sounds quite promising. This Ford's whole Mac jet theme leads you to expect the kind of frantic lunge away from rest which does characterise some of this car's EV rivals, so it is slightly surprising to find a more measured level of thrust which clues you in immediately to the engineering care which has been lavished on the drive dynamics here. Uh, with some EVs, uh, the throttle is like an on-off switch. Here though, it's been beautifully calibrated to better replicate a combustion power unit and a reasonably potent one too, which of course you'll need uh, given this car's portly curb weight, which can be as much as 2.2 tonnes. That inevitably affects handling, as does the rather unford-like synthetic steering feel. But there is a bit more bite to the drive dynamics than is common with this class, uh, with well-bridled body control and keen grip through the turns. The Mach-E can be had in either rear-driven or all-wheel driven forms. Uh, the latter version adds to the rear axle AC electric motor with a further electric motor at the front. Either way, with a base 68 kilowatt hour standard range battery, this Ford puts out 269 PS. The bigger 88 kilowatt hour extended range battery we have here is a weighty thing, of course, so Ford increases the power output to match to 294 PS with the rear driven model and to 351 PS with this all wheel drive variant. The power plant's highest state of tune is reserved for the frantic flagship GT model, which is based around the same extended range all wheel drive formula but puts out 487 PS and more torque, 860 Newton meters, than a Ford GT supercar. Whatever your variant of choice, uh, the Mac E road experience is dependent quite a bit on your choice between the three drive modes that Ford offers here. Uh, laid back whisper with its super light steering, uh, all out untamed with its sharper throttle and rumbly propulsion sound and the compromise active setting that you'll probably use most of the time. There's also a one pedal drive feature which, as on other rival EVs, ramps up the regenerative braking to the point where you hardly ever need to use the brake pedal, which you'll need to select if you want to get anywhere close to the driving range figures being claimed here, uh, supposed to be between 273 and 379 miles depending on the drive format and the battery pack options you select. Uh, charging time from 10 to 80% capacity is typically between 40 and 90 minutes depending on whether you're hooked up to a 50 or 100 kilowatt charger. Only the 88 kilowatt hour extended range battery can DC charge at up to 150 kilowatts and so give you access to super fast rapid charging. Plugged into the 7.4 or 11 kilowatt Ford connected wall box you can install it in your garage. A full charge from 0 to 100% will take about 11 hours for the standard range model or about 14 hours with this extended range Mac E. At the time of this test in autumn 2021, based on an average cost of kilowatt hour energy uh, of 16.3 pence, fully charging your Ford from your garage would typically cost about 12 pounds 20 pence. There's something of a rather exclusive, unusual feel to the Mach-E, which perhaps has something to do with the fact that the styling was presided over by Ford's head of design, Jason Castriota, previously at Ferrari and responsible for the Maranello maker's 599 GTB. Here, his task was to translate what Ford calls its family jewels, signature Mustang aesthetic cues, into a very different kind of car. Sure enough, they all feature these muscular rear haunches, the cab rear stance, and perhaps most recognisably, these trademark tri-bar tail lamps. Getting in is interesting. That's something that Ford gives you the option to do with its phone as a key technology. There are no conventional door handles, just this illuminated button here that you have to rather awkwardly jab at. Uh, one writer likened this to having to poke C-3PO in the eye, at which point uh, the door pops open enough for you to pull it back with this rather ugly little latch. 
and introducing you to an interior that's nothing like anything that you'll ever have previously seen on a Ford. Uh, the main cabin talking point is this huge Tesla-like 15.5-inch central touchscreen, which showcases Ford's latest SYNC 4 media connectivity system and which hoovers up nearly all the usual switches and buttons. Uh, there's lots on here, of course, but conversational voice recognition really helps you to easily navigate uh, what you need and the software can learn all your preferences very quickly. Unlike on a Tesla, you get a further screen behind the steering wheel properly in your line of sight. This letterbox shaped 10.2-inch uh, full digital cluster displays key driving data including range and digital so-called ground speed. You sit quite high on flattish seats uh, peering out across the huge bonnet and the build quality and cabin fittings aren't completely what you'd ideally want for the kind of money that Ford's asking here. But the mixture of fabric, faux carbon fibre and stitched faux leather trim works quite well. And there's plenty of storage space around the cabin. OK, time to take a look in the rear where the doors also have to be accessed by a strange little button. Once back here, as you'd hope, uh, you're treated to the first Mustang model that you needn't be a eunuch to be able to sit in the back of. Uh, and this one, in fact, a passenger of over six foot can quite comfortably sit behind a driver of the same size, helped by the fact that the roof line doesn't taper back until quite a long way in the body. Hence the rather impressive levels of headroom here for a coupe style SUV even with this fixed panoramic roof fitted, which is standard with the bigger battery. Let's finish with a look at boot space, which will be accessible via this powered tailgate, uh, provided you've stretched to the bigger battery model. Now we're not wildly impressed by what's delivered here. A flimsy tonneau cover positioned above the smallest trunk in the segment, rated at 402 litres. That's not much more than you'll get from a little Volkswagen ID3. Even a Tesla Model 3 saloon has more. Still, the room on offer will probably be sufficient for most owners. It's enough for seven carry-on cases, if you can lug them up to this high cargo base. And there is a bit more space beneath this height-adjustable boot floor, although that is only because Ford refuses to include any sort of spare wheel. Uh, there's a light on the right, along with the 12-volt socket, plus you'll get the usual pair of bag hooks and four tie-down points. Disappointingly, Ford hasn't segmented the rear bench 40-20-40 or included the sort of ski hatch you'll get on the rival Volkswagen ID4, so you can't push long items into the cabin between rear seated folk. Uh, flatten the rear bench and up to 1,420 litres of space can be freed up. We're not quite finished yet though because there's a further so-called frunk space beneath the bonnet. It's an 81 litre space mostly taken up with a central compartment the two main charging leads, but like the mega box in the boot of a Ford Puma, it has a drain hole at the bottom so you can easily wash muddy boots or muddy charging leads. Neat. At the first ever Detroit Auto Show, Henry Ford said he was working on something that would strike like forked lightning. That was a Model T. With the Mustang Mach E, Ford aims once again to strike like forked lightning, this time with a more interesting, charismatic interpretation of what a family sized full electric car can be. The coming years will bring us dozens of new electric vehicles, but most will be sensible, worthy, and rather boring. This car and the various electrified Mustang models that will follow it offers something more appealing and charismatic in a way that we think may well strike a real customer chord. Just, perhaps, as the original Mustang sports car did way back in the 60s. Who says that lightning doesn't strike twice?